All right. Well, it is 2.30 by uh, my computer uh, clock here, so we'll get started. A small and mighty group here in attendance. Uh, welcome uh, to you all, and, and thank you uh, for uh, for being here this afternoon, a uh, nice afternoon here uh, in uh, Halifax. Hope it's nice where you are. And just want to make sure that uh, you can both see the screen and hear me okay. Just drop something in the chat box there. Okay, excellent. So looks like uh, good. All right. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you uh, all once again for uh, for being here this afternoon for a, a, a session on Google Draw. I know there was a lot of other great sessions during this uh, time period. So thanks for selecting this one. I hope I can provide you with some uh, new insight into um, what I consider one of the lesser used tools in the in the Google suite of products that we have access to here in Nova Scotia. Uh, before we get underway with the presentation, just uh, uh, land recognition that uh, this presentation is taking place on the unceded territory of the Mi'kma'ki. Um, I forgot to do that in my morning session, and I think that's uh, something I have to make uh, a point of putting in a slide actually in the slide deck, but uh, I did want to acknowledge that. Um, my name is Chris Chocek, and I am with uh, HRCE, and I can see here from your little tags that um, you are not with HRCE, so perhaps we've never met. That's an unfortunate thing about these virtual conferences. We, uh, we don't have the chance to uh, see each other and meet, and it's so nice when we're able to get together on campus at a university to uh, network that way, but we'll do our best here. Please, along the way, if you've got questions or, you know, something happens, just put it in the chat box because I will be, you know, I've got my uh, screen um, split here so I can see both. And uh, if I miss something in the chat box, put it in there and and uh, uh, I'll try and get to it uh, a little bit as soon as I see it. Um, <clears throat> this is our agenda. It's not interactive, just based on the fact that we are not using um, Google Meet and Google Slides. This is a kind of a, um, a different platform. So uh, it is pretty much a, uh, a, a what I had done last year when we were using uh, Google Meet um, and uh, for HRCE as well. So, but I guess the the point of this is one i've already shared the presentation with you in the chat box there you should be able to see the link and the other point is that i created that in google draw that was all created right in draw so uh so it's just kind of a little hmm how do you do that or you know i'd like to be able to do that well you can and and it's it's totally all possible um just kind of a little put this out there for you kind of keep an eye out for this if we were in person I'd be able to award a prize for the first person who sees this somewhere within the uh, presentation uh, this is a component of it so if you see that put it in the chat box um, and just while we're at this stage uh, if you don't mind in the chat box let me know how much have you used Google Draw? Are you like an expert? Are you, you know, a pretty comfortable user of it? You use it on a regular basis with your students or is it one of those things that you just kind of, you're here because you want to learn more about it? So I just like to get your starting point with Google Draw. So Diana, you haven't used it. Okay, good to know. You're in the right place. Gina, yeah, 
Oh, good. You so yeah. So you've used it to make banners. Oh, and you've done some art. Awesome. Okay, so between the two of you, uh, I don't know if there's anybody else. Um, so that's kind of here and here, and that's good. All right. So just kind of knowing that that's hel that's helpful for me, for me. Um, and guess what? I'm going to uh, cover all the bases. Because you never know where people are. So um, the other point I'd like to make is that no matter what I suggest or tell you or offer to you, remember, you're the expert. You are the content expert. You are the expert when it comes to your students. You are the expert with your grade level. Uh, my role, I am technology integration with HRCE. So I'm like a tech coach, tech mentor, tech specialist, whatever. Um, so I come into all the grades and kind of go, oh, this would work great or this looks – but ultimately, I leave at the end of the day and maybe I'm not back. So that's where, you know, you might say, that's a great idea, but here's how I would have to modify that to make it work in my class. So the things I say to you here today, remember, you're the expert. You know what will work and what won't work and what needs to be modified. All right, well, let's get it off. I know – that um, for years, I never even really bothered with Google Draw. I was like, I don't need Google Draw. I can do everything I want to do in Google Slides because I had even done less and less with Google Docs. I'd done it all in Google Slides. And then I started to kind of think, you know, there's an area of my practice in, around digital communication that I could improve on, that I could get better at. And so I did start to do some courses and learning and and it kind of opened up a new world to me with this, you know, the whole idea of digital design. And Google Draw was one of the tools that was really focused on in a number of uh, uh, classes that I that I took and participated in. And I kind of went, I need to revisit that tool and look at the way I, that I do things. So that's where the basis of this presentation comes from. Um, and I do want to say that there are things that we can do with Google Slides that it's very it's an adequate it's a great tool we know that we use it we love google slides right and there's a lot of things that you can do with google slides and some that you can't do with google slides but you can in google draw i'll talk about those a little but there's a lot of overlap as well so just let me say this before i move on into the heart of the presentation that what i show you today you might go, well, yeah, I can do that in slides, or I want to apply it in slides, and you certainly can. Okay, so a lot of this is transferable between the two, all right? Now, that's really small on my screen. I have to kind of go over to my presentation just to point out some things here. Remember that in Google Draw, it's only one canvas. Google Slides, we get multiple canvases, right? Google Draw is only one page. However, what's better in Google Draw is working off in the margins over on this side of the screen we kind of think oh we have to do everything right here but just because it's off the canvas doesn't mean we can't use that and the kids will find it you just say go to the left go to the right scroll right scroll left. they'll find it you can make use of that space and it, it can be quite effective if you start to do that use that what we would typically call white space or off the canvas space um, if you start to do that, they'll find it. It'll become part of your regular practice. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of overlap there and um, some things that do work better in um, Google Slides, such as uh, having an animation. It's not really on there, but you know you can animate some of your things through the uh, features of Google Slides. But we're going to really focus on uh, drawing and, and that aspect of of presentations and applications. Now, that was last year's Venn diagram. Since that time, a new tool has come onto the scene and really exploded in the field of education. And I know you know what I'm talking about. You, th you think you know what, what tool needs to be included in there as well? I bet somebody does.
Yeah, that's right, Gina. That's right. Jamboard. Jamboard needs to now be part of the conversation. And so here, here's another graphic to show the three of them and where we, uh, what we should be thinking of, right? So Jamboard is, is a great tool. I love Jamboard too. And, uh, you know, there's, it's drawing features. There are some drawing features there, but it's not a full, full, uh, robust drawing tool, much like, uh, Google's drawings can be, but that's just so you can kind of go, oh yeah, that's right. Or that might work here. So some of these things that we do in, uh, uh, Google Draw will work in all of them, but uh, we're primarily going to be focusing on Google Draw. So I asked that question where everybody's starting point was because there might be somebody who hasn't used it. And fair enough. We do have somebody in the audience, which is awesome. Um, you do not get to Google Draw through the regular checkerboard or waffle drop down there on the right hand side of our g nespez it doesn't show up there don't ask me why i don't know um what you have to do is go into your google drive so the graphic on the right go into your drive click on uh new and then slide down to more and then under more you'll see Google Drawings, right? Right below Google Forms. So someday, someday Google will put Google Drawings up with the, up in the big leagues. But for now it's down in the minors, uh, which, uh, which I really don't understand why they do that at all. So again, just kind of a, uh, a an overview of the menu bar. A lot of the menu system within Google Draw it's exactly the same as slides, docs. It's all there. It's all pretty much the same thing. So it's nice to have that overlap. Most of it's the same. Not all of it, but most of it is. Okay. So again, going into a little deeper on the tool uh, bar side of things. Uh, and keep note that... Um, you know, when you select objects, things change. You do get additional uh, menus. And some of those can be, you know, uh, for a while, I ignored them. I went, well, I don't need that. Or just, and then when you start to explore them, you go, oh, that, that does have some value. So um, I'm going to start off in this slide deck. But at some point, I'm going to stop this presentation and move over to Google Drawing to actually show you some of these things live, okay? When we get into some of the perhaps more uh, intricate step-by-step uh, -step or how, or if somebody says, how did you do that in the chat box? Please put that in there and I will go over to the Google Draw and I'll show you how, okay? <clears throat> so very typically in Google Draw, we call it a canvas or a workspace or page, okay? And it, much like Google uh, Docs, we say it's in a, on a page. In Google Slides, we say it's on a slide. But in Google Draw, you can say it's on a canvas to the kids to give it that kind of arty feeling. And when you think canvas, you think drawing. And it is a great tool for, for, for doing just that. Now, when you log in to Google Draw, it gives you a default canvas. You're not stuck by that. You get to, you, you can change that. There are two ways you can change that. You can go to page setup and you can change, you know, the dimensions of that to work better for you. Or, and this is the different, uh, one of the differences between slides and drawing, you can grab the, the grabby, the handle down in the lower right. And it's that lined feature of it can't probably see that on the screen where my cursor is running over it. But that's where you can grab and drag the canvas to be bigger or smaller, okay? It really depends what you want. Now, why would you want to change the, uh, the size of the canvas? Well, when you're doing some special projects, and this is what Gina had already uh, alluded to that she uses draw for is making a banner in uh, in Google Forms. You need to know 
what pixel sizes are going to fit there. And this is a graphic. I apologize that it's a little blurry. Uh, this is from Tony Vincent, who created this graphic to show the, the pixels that you need to have for your graphics when you create them for the various tools that we use in the field of education. OK, so you can see they're they're all listed there and, and and it really changes based on the medium that you're using. So you'll notice that Google Classroom is there as well. So you can create a banner in Google Drawing and import it into your Google Classroom. That way uh, you need to have 1600 by 400 pixels for that. Unfortunately, if anybody's always trying to change that banner in their Google Classroom, it's always going to have that gray bar, right? Because Google has not released that uh, limitation in uh, Google Classroom. Not yet, anyways. I know it's a frequent ask, and hopefully someday they'll they'll say, okay, all right, we'll take away that grayed out banner. Because you, you oh, heaven forbid, you used your own banner. Um, <laughs> a little pet peeve of mine. Okay, some other functions and Oh, that's newer to me. Um, hopefully then, Gina, it'll make its way here to Nova Scotia sooner than later. Um, now, you can also, you'll know that you're in Google Drawing, and you can tell this to the kids uh, by the checkerboard's background, okay? And that lets you know that it's transparent. And when you're doing things, that's a that's a good feature because then, you, you know, it's kind of like having two layers, and you layer it onto whatever else it is, and it'll be transparent through. Uh, for some people, this checkerboard background is a little offsetting. I don't mind it. It just reminds me I'm in Google Draw. But if you are a type of person that you like to have a different background, you don't like checkerboard, you can just change the background. You can right click on it and then you can just select the background and go with the color. You can go with the traditional white if you would like. Okay, so that works better for some people than others. Just an accessibility issue. <clears throat> Now to get into some of the features, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to, uh, and if you want to try some of these in, in your uh, Google Drawing, well, if you want to play along, please feel free to. Remember, if I do something, say something, and you go, how do you do that? I'm not quite sure. I'll pop over into my Google Draw, and I will show you in the uh, uh, another tab. Um, and I'm going to kind of highlight a feature and then maybe suggest something, an activity or something to do with the students uh, throughout the way here. So there'll be, this is more than just uh, here's how you use Google Draw. It's here's how you can use it, but also apply it in your classroom, some ideas for classroom use. So first of all, you can, uh, you, you know, Google, we have Google Draw. We have the same font features, the same menu structure there. And one thing that you can do to make things kind of pop and give it some depth is you can start to do it what is called format options. Sometimes it lives in the toolbar. Sometimes it will disappear and you have to click on the three dots like my graphic shows there with the fuchsia color around it. Uh, if you click on format options, a new bar will open on the right hand side. And you're going to see drop shadow and reflection. Okay, so you can see drop shadow is that effect is there on the green screenshot and the reflection is on the blue screenshot. Just to kind of give it a little more depth than it catches the viewer's eyes, doesn't it? And you can play with those and some of the more advanced techniques really make use of these uh, two features. You can also change the color of it so that drop shadow, I have it default the, there to black, but you can change it to other colors. But it gives a, a nice presentation, a, a bit of a pop, a bit of a, a 3D effect, and it starts to layer various um, parts of your graphic. Something else that lives in slides and docs and draw uh, sorry, not Google Docs, but slides and uh, draw is WordArch. And WordArch is a very, uh, um, has a very nondescript icon in the bar there. It's got that A. 
um, and then it says word art and you can add it as a title you can add it as a heading you can add it as a caption and it does it does Michelle you're right and um, word art's pretty cool what happens with word art if you're not familiar with it is it'll pop up a text box there like I've shown on the far right and then um, you type in your text and it'll be all caps. You don't have to worry about that. It's all caps anyways. And then um, uh, you hit enter and it'll pop it up there. And then the nice thing about word art is that you can select different colors for the outline and the fill. And you can see how I've got give it a try. That's using word art. And you can see I used a light versus a dark. So I'm starting to bring in some contrasting colors, complementary but yet contrasting. And so it gives that, again, a visual appeal, a visual effect. And you can stretch it, and there's ways to play with it and, and have some fun with it. And you can select different uh, fonts for the word art as well. So while we're speaking about fonts, again, this is across all Google platform, the whole all the products, you can change fonts. I know you know that. That's a given. But so often we all stick with Arial, right? And it's gotten to the point where Arial is just like the default font and everything's in Arial. We need to start to break that. And while we're talking about accessibility, there is a font here on my screen. When I click on more fonts, I can go down. I can see what I've used recently. But it's the one, it's not Lobster. You can see Lobster's highlighted. But it's Lexan Deca underneath it. Lexan Deca is a font that Google created, but they did it based on research. And the research was around um, people reading text on the screen. And they found that this font, people can read it faster and comprehend better with it than a a regular traditional like Times New Roman font and it works better for kids. So it's an accessible font and I want to point that out. You, if you don't have that font in your drop down, how do you get it? You click on more fonts, you go over a brand new box will open up, you type in, you can type in Lex and Deca and you'll find it and you put a check mark beside it and it'll be in your font file. It's really simple. But there's a lot of other things you can do when you start to look for fonts and you can find ones that are better for displays like titles and you can find others that you know are better that have all handwriting which give another feel that font can really influence the impact of your digital communication so i just wanted to point that out while we were talking a little bit about fonts okay back to more google drawing shapes Again, shapes lives in slides, docs, drawing, and shapes are, there are a lot of shapes here. A lot of shapes that you can do different things with, all right? And one of the things that I've learned more and more about is that you can take these shapes and you can stretch them, you can move them, you can rotate them. But if you notice that there is a shape in the very first one that looks like a Pac-Man and that one you can make, you know, it's not always going to be the Pac-Man or the three quarters of a circle shape. You can take that that's got bars on it, little handles that you can make that shape uh, customized to, to uh, the size you want. And there's other shapes like that as well. Um, but shapes can be filled with colors. You can double click on the shape and you can put text in it like I have down there in my shape example. All right, so it just gives it a little bit more, uh, you know, what would I use the shape for? Well, there's start to you'll start to see applications for it as we go through the presentation. You can put images into your Google uh, products, as you know. Same thing with Google Draw. Okay, you insert an image, and it gives you all those choices. Where do you find the image? If you're on your computer. You can go from Google Drive, or you can insert it from Google. So those are all available to you. No, no surprises there. But what we need to start to think about to take this to the next level is cropping our images. Okay, so sometimes we have images and, you know, there's something in it and it, 
it's not really that good and you want to crop it out. So we crop it, we just kind of bring it in and we get rid of that portion. That's fine. And, and, and that's good too. And that's, uh, you know, perhaps a skill we need to start to talk to our students about as well. But there's another neat trick, and I don't know if you know this or not, but this is a neat little thing that you can do, is that you can select your image, and then you can put it into a shape, okay? And so here's what it looks like. You're going to see on the screen there, that is like actually probably about the one good picture I think I have of myself. I didn't take it. A friend took it. And uh, um, that's the picture I use, overuse. And you can see what happens when I crop it with shapes, okay? And I've cropped it with a variety of those default shapes that pop up there. And then I've added, a, I've just changed the border to it, and I've made the border a color and changed the weight. So different ways to kind of bring in a little bit more life into uh, perhaps a graphic or a presentation. Here's my first tip that's embedded within this slide deck, and, and that's make sure that you, uh, uh, it is Michelle, you're right. And that's make sure that you use your, the snap lines, uh, the snap two grid lines, which are the red lines that now appear when we're working in our Google products. They weren't there a couple of years ago, but they've added them. And uh, I love them. I make use of them all the time. If for some reason they're not showing up, you can turn them on, or for some reason they're they bug you, you can turn them off. Um, another thing with uh, the Google products is that you can bring in uh, icons. Uh, icons are a good form of graphic design. Um, and so you can bring in um, Noun Project as a great repository of black and white icons. And flat icon, another great repository of colored icons. And you can go to the website, either now project or flat icon, and then copy one and paste it into any of the Google products. Okay. So it's a really nice way to kind of bring in some of the, uh, create a more interesting layout on presentations and graphics. Um, the nice thing about some of these icons is you could show them to the students and then they could start to design their own as well. Um, that's the thing, another thing that uh, is possible within within Google Draw is like, okay, you know what, this is an icon that's, that we need to represent something that we do in our class. If this is something that we do all the time, perhaps you're interested in creating a, a logo for your classroom. Well, if you talked a little bit about icon design or logo design, then they could use Google Draw to create the uh, logo for your uh, for your class or for your um, you know um, event or or what have you. But uh, now Project and Flat Icon are two uh, two of my go tos. I am there um, uh, almost on a daily basis. Next, coming back to uh, some of the picture things here is changing the transparency. This is when we click on an image and we can go uh, format options and adjust it and we can make it transparent. Okay. And um, this is, uh, this is useful for a few things. Uh, and I'll point this out that if you did a, had the students take a picture of themselves on the, on their Chromebook, and then they were able to bring the picture into Google draw. And then if they took the slider and reduced the transparency, increased the transparency, what happens, and I shouldn't say it's a self-portrait uh, picture of themselves, could be a picture of anything, but you can actually start to trace over it. So you could trace or copy a picture. Now you would talk about copyright and all that, but if you did it of a self-portrait, of course, that's fine. Could be a different art project where they each do a digital self-portrait. And that's one way of doing it. And it, it allows them that support because to draw a self-portrait from uh, by, by looking at a picture of yourself over here, that's tough. That's tough. But by allowing them to draw the outline of it from a transparent photo of themselves, that would be an easier uh, accessible point of entry for them. 
I want to also point out why you might want to use transparencies here. And this is uh, an, an example of Google Drawings is a transparency. So I found that picture, you know, I just Googled Google Draw icon, brought that into my presentation, and then um, decreased the transparency or increased the transparency, sorry, and then sent it to the back so that I'm working all my text is sitting on top of that of that transparent icon. So that's my um, one consistent in this presentation. So that's a way to, to, to use transparent um, images as well. And just another tip here as we go along, make use of those screen or of the keyboard um, shortcuts. Um, it's there are a lot of them. I know that I want to create, uh, you know, a graphic or something that has the main ones that we would use in like elementary. And when you're using Google Draw, this is a helpful one to know when you're resizing things. Sometimes if you're resized, like with word art, it can get all askew. It doesn't keep the same dimensions. And if you press these keys, like you can see there, if you press the shift key and then drag it, it's going to keep the proper proportions and, and that'll keep you sane sometimes. But if you also want to resize it from the center, you know, you, you press control or option, depending if you're on a, a Mac or Chromebook or a Windows device. And then shift control option is to um, uh, when you're resizing from the center. Just those, uh, some handy keyboard shortcuts there. What about lines? Lines are a lot of different lines within Google Draw, which uh, are great for, you know, when we typically do straight lines a lot, most of the time. And they're great for flow charts and stuff, and we can add arrows, but it's that curve and the scribble tool that can be really useful when we're doing that transparent self-portrait that I was just talking about, because that's where you're going to use the curve tool. And you have to kind of, uh, the curve tool and the scribble tool can be kind of frustrating for the kids, right? Because they click too fast or they click too slow and it'll lock it out. So it's something that takes practice you wouldn't want to jump right into doing a self-portrait like on day one. You'd want to give them, you know, practice using those tools first of all before you had them do that. I got another activity. I'll show you something I've done with, with that uh, coming up here shortly. Gina, you're, uh, you're all over this. That's awesome. Okay. So, um, we already talked about uh, changing, uh, you know, the transparency, brightness, contrast, those things all live there. That's a better screenshot of some of the other options there. And then uh, arranging tools. This is a valuable skill for students to know if, if um, um, they're working, you know, with traditional paper and pencil, it's always one layer, right? Unless you put another piece of paper down, but that's what they understand. So that's how you can, um, connect with them on this particular skill here. And this is really valuable for digital communication and digital graphic design as well as knowing what layer you're on and knowing what needs to be in the front and what needs to be on the back. All right. And so sending something forward, sending something back, sending something back backward, playing with those and understanding what's happening for younger students, that's going to be really confusing. We want, wouldn't want to do too, too much of it. But for our, you know, our upper elementary, they can start to handle some of this and know what, how to layer things properly and find things where they are. Uh, because you can do some really neat things once you start to get that layering effect going. And if there's anybody who's not really sure about layering and how that works, you know, yeah, exactly, Michelle, right? Transferable skill to slides for sure. So, but that's something, you know, might be something that you uh, think about making sure your students know as well. Of course, within Google Draw, we can hyperlink things just like we can do in our other Google products as well. So now we're getting to the point where like, you know, well, so what? All these skills, all these things, what, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to use it beyond maybe doing a self-portrait or what have you? 
or making some word art? Where, what are we going to do in Google Draw? Well, for, for one, you could start by making infographics. Now, I'm going to use the word infographic here, but it's also a digital poster, right? Same thing, but yet different. True, true infographics are one point of information or several points of information that are shown in a graphical form versus a poster, which is telling or, or showing something that uh, is uh, perhaps related to uh, your classroom content or uh, school-based event, okay? So these are things that you can do in Google Draw, and you can see the uh, agenda that I showed, to, <clears throat> uh, showed you earlier was just a series of um, shapes that I uh, put together to make that uh, three by three array. And then I took an oval and sat that on the top layer so I could kind of get the, and, and shaded it with a lighter color. Like there's a whole bunch of things going on there. I wouldn't expect, you know, grade threes to be able to do something like that. But some of our older students, for sure, that might be something that you consider having them do in Google Draw. Here's just another one that I've done, again, very similar to the previous design with a series of uh, rectangles forming the basis of it with a circle over top. But you can see how I, you know, applied that drop shadow to give it some of that popping effect. And it just looks like it's popping off the page versus a flat presentation. I've changed the font there and I've brought in icons. So it's all things to, to combine to create an effective uh, digital message. Graphic organizers. We use a lot of graphic organizers in, uh, in education and, and you know, you can create them in Google Draw, right? That's a thing. You can create them. That one an example of the Freyer model. There's that uh, same design just put into a Freyer model now. Um, so I created that, but you know, really you can find a lot on the web. You don't have to go and, and create everything new. You can find one, make a copy, and then it's your own, right? And then you can tweak it to uh, work best for you in your, in your grade level, in your practice, in your school with your students. Here's the thing, let's flip it a little bit and let's say, hey, why don't the students make their own, right? Our upper level students, they've seen a lot of graphic organizers. Get them to create their own. Put it out there. Have a little mini lesson around it and then have them create their own graphic organizer around the content you're working on in math or science or you know, their inquiry-based learning project, whatever it may be. Here's a tip though for using, when you're using um, graphic organizers that, you know, if you've got your template set up, there is no lock feature within Google Draw. It's not like we can lock everything down. Students ultimately can move things around, right? And you're like, oh, that's even if you assign them a copy, you do it because Google Draw will work. You can assign it as in, in classroom. And uh, the, it's something that you need to kind of go, don't move that. Or what you can do is you could cover it up with a transparent shape. So you can see the transparent shape that I have on the left. That's a bigger rectangle than my Freyer model. I would bring that over top of it, okay, making sure it's on the top layer. And then the students would have to insert their text box or insert their shape into each box without actually touching my um, master of my Freyer model, okay? So that's one a workaround for that. I don't know if anybody else has got a workaround for what they've done in the past, um, but uh, it's one way to kind of make sure everything remains the same, remains intact. So what's something else that we can do in Google Draw? Here's something here. This is a drag and drop activity. So you, what you're going to see here is I have integrated a photo. I did a screenshot of um, my uh, WeVideo screen. 
and uh, I did this for the purpose of um, instruction, but yet at the same time, kind of review. But it could be done as a, a pre-learning activity as well. So what this is, is once I've got that picture in, I've kind of identified identified some of the key vocabulary I want my participants to know around WeVideo. I'm going to talk about this in my presentation and afterwards I'm going to say, okay, I've got an activity for you. I want you to go and move those boxes, those key pieces of vocabulary, because vocabulary is very important, isn't it, with stu student success for lear learning and knowing content. I want you to move those boxes to the appropriate spot on the image. So it's not only it's a drag and drop, but it's also like a, it's like an exit slip. It's like a little check in. It's like a, you know, it could be a pre activity, like I said. So um, um, that's something that, and it wouldn't take that to, to set that up for you to create it. It doesn't take that long. As long as you have your screenshot, bring that in and you can simply create more of those boxes or less. It re really depends. Here's just another tip for uh, designing um, drag and drop activities in Google Drawing. I'll give you a moment just to, to look at that graphic there on the left. That gives me a chance to have a drink too. This is from Tony Vincent. Tony Vincent is a wonderful educator. And if you don't follow him on Twitter, do. And if you learn one thing from this presentation, it's follow Tony Vincent on Twitter. Um, so you can see Tony says have a placeholder where they should be putting things. So he has like a gray shape where the students will know to drag. It gives them a target. I think that's a really good, really good tip, right? We used to have that on our worksheets. There's the box. Put your words in the box. And, uh, and that's what he's saying here that we should be doing with our digital activities as well. So <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to show you, another activity, another take on this drag and drop activity is to use those boxes for text. Okay, so I've got a very basic example there on the, the right hand side. I'm going to pop out of presentation mode here and I'm going to show you how to do this if you don't know already. So it says there today is and it says, put your answer here on the lighter portion of the blue and then delete this to reveal the answer here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop here and I'm going to go here. Whoops. Right. Put my answer here. Today is feels like Wednesday. All right. Now I'm a student. So I've put in my I'm going to see if I got that right. Is today actually Wednesday? I'm going to go here. I don't have to delete it. I can move it out of the way. Oh, damn, it's Thursday. Well, no, maybe that's a good thing. So <laughs> that's a fun way to kind of have a, a self-checking uh, little assessment, little fun activity. Students can do that, too. They could build their own, couldn't they? So it's just another take on the, uh, the drag and drop um, option there that we've seen that I've talked about. I'm just going to get my speaker notes back up there. And uh, yeah, so, and the nice thing about that, once you get students kind of familiar with that, then they won't, if you've got one master, you know, they can always go back, hit undo and put it back on there if they do the delete version of that. Something else with Google Draw, you can make timelines and timelines um, work well in it because you're not limited to one slide, right? You can have a quite large if you need be because you can scroll left and right don't forget that in google draw so you can see i started one there with my day and uh, there's another more uh, advanced one that i found on the web uh, on harriet tubman now here's the take on this here's to make it a little bit more lively or act active you could have the students um create the timeline for the school day but you have all the icons on the and pictures on the left and they have to drag the pictures over and find the the proper spot on the timeline for that perhaps you do that as a little you know warm up perhaps it's a, a checkout uh che or exit slip um 
that they do based on the content that you've just done, you know, um, just something, a little quick, quick fix, quick activity that can be facilitated through Google Draw. And don't forget, you can assign these into your Google Classroom as well. Along back to images, you can have a one word story, right? You could have a five word story. You could have a six word story. No need to, you know, break the bank and get kids to write a paragraph on this sunset. What's a one word story about this? Right? Again, a nice warm up. What a great way to start the morning. Ah, one word story. Whew. Man, I don't have to write a paragraph. I love it. I wish my uh, teachers were like that. It was always like, get that pen moving. All right, so work, staying along with images, you can also get in on the action. So you saw that picture previously, okay? Like I said, that's my one picture that I use. And what I did this time though with that picture, the very first time you saw it, it had the background. I was on my front deck. And I took that picture and I put it into remove BG. Is everybody familiar with remove BG? And remove BG does a really nice job of removing the background and making it transparent. So I found a picture of the moon, put that in the background, put my doctored picture and put myself in the front. Boom. Now I'm watching this instead of the sunset, I'm watching the moon rise. Gina, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to teach you something new in this presentation. <laughs> but it's a fun, that's a little fun. That's like, that's like green screening, but like, you know, the real quick way of doing a green screen. And that is something that's, there's remove BG is not the only one, but remove BG does it without, you know, inundating you with ads. So that's why I like it. So this is another activity kind of along with what I was saying with drag and drop, having the vocabulary there on the side, but this time it's not based on an image. It's based on filling in the blanks, a little more traditional, but perhaps that's something that's gonna work for you. We can have some interactive um, templates here for our math uh, units of study. Oh, that's good, Gina. I'm glad about that. Um, and this is a very, I think I even took this one from uh, Founded on the Web. But I'm going to show you one here that I created myself. And not to say that this is a great um, example or anything like that, but one that I want just to show you how to set it up here, you know, and this is creating a pattern. So for, for our younger learners, I've got some instructions there on the left. And I've created a bunch of copies, control C, 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 copy, 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 or control D. That will get you multiple copies. And I would do a few things differently now with this template. But um, what I want to also show you there is going off the screen, right? Using the margins, make it work for you. So when we say, you know, very typically our students would see that green pattern and the, or the green background, and they would say, that's where my pattern has to end, right? but it doesn't. So make sure that you can, that's a really nice feature of Google Draws that we can start to use that stuff. Um, games, they can create games. There's lots of games out there that are, that are made in Google Draw. This is from Alice Keeler, it's Connect Four, and it's played, uh, you don't get that nice kinesthetic dropping of the, the counters, but you know, it's still kind of a, a fun way to play it. Uh, I know there's also Battleship that exists out there as well and a few other traditional games. Uh, but uh, but have a look for them and, you know, make a copy and, and make it yours. <clears throat> you can create memes or mems, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and again, I've already we've talked about images. So just put some text over it and boom, there you go. Um, You've got your own uh, mem generator or mean generator.
Oops, I forgot. There's an animation on that one. Uh, you can create certificates and uh, badges. That might be something that you think about doing or even turn it over to the students who wants to create our certificate for, you know, our, our guest presenter today or our, um, you know, student of the week. You can have them do magazine covers. If you, uh, if you brought in a magazine cover, uh, you could have kids kind of design their own. Again, this gets into more of uh, the digital communication and digital uh, design and magazines, uh, even though they might not read them as much anymore, uh, there's still a lot of good uh, design principles that are used with the, uh, with the pages of a magazine. Social media is something that's uh, near and dear to my heart, and I think it's not going away, and it's uh, something that we need to embrace in our digital citizenship uh, discussions. And um, one way of looking at this is to have students create, you know, unplugged or unconnected uh, social media posts and talking about that and deconstructing it. One thing you can do in uh, Google Draw is bring in, you know, a template for uh, Facebook. And uh, this is my Facebook page. It's not a very good page. I actually don't use Facebook that much. It is my Achilles heel. But that's my Facebook page a couple years ago. And then what I did was I started to... Um, edit it. So I'm making my template here. And so you can see once I finish going over that, it's going to look very similar to Facebook, but at the same time, it'll be a template for the students to use. Again, drag and drop poetry, magnet poetry. That was a big hit uh, a number of years ago. Uh, creating poetry this way could be still something that the kids do. Um, and uh, this was a, a, a template that's out there by Casey Bell, but uh, there's a lot of them. And there's blackout poetry as well. Same thing, you know, you can do it that way. So nice things to do in Google Draw around poetry. But I'm going to come up to my absolute favorite thing with Google Draw, okay? This is my absolute favorite thing. And I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but it's called Shapegrams. Okay, and Shapegrams is a project by Tony Vincent, and what he did was create a series of challenges, drawing challenges, using all in Google Draw. Uh, he's created the instructions for it, and it really um, creates, sets a skill level on a continuum on you know, things that I've talked about in this and such as layering and moving things around and, and finding colors and contrasting colors and shades and, and all kinds of things. And the first four shape grounds, shape grams are free, completely free. So you can just Google shape grams and you'll see one, two, three, four are all free. Okay. You can make a copy. It's a lesson that you could do with your students tomorrow. Okay. Uh, he's got a video embedded in it, and the nice thing about it, he also has an activity on the other side. He uses the gray space, the margins, really, really well. So um, it's it's excellent. And the first four are free. Beyond that, you need a subscription, and a subscription for a year is about thirty dollars American. And it's not you know it's not exorbitant or anything like that. But if you're an HRCE and you go and I'm, I apologize, this is an HRCE deal. I actually have a subscription and I can do it with uh, students. Um, I've done it with like, I can, just because of the licensing, like I could do one with a, with a grade and then maybe do another, but I can't just say, here you go, because you know, it's breaking license uh, and copyright, his license and copyright. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, so if you're an HRCE and you want, you know, to think about doing a shape gram, I would say do the first four and then contact me because I would do it with your class either virtually or in person. Um, what grade? Michelle, I would say as soon as they can touch on a, a trackpad and manage a Chromebook, that's where it would start. Where does it finish? Um, it's graphic design. So I've done it with junior highs. I've done it with grade sevens. 
And it really, I would say right up to grade nine. Because what, and Tony says this, is that, yeah, you can, you're replicating what you see on the screen there, but then you're going to take it and make it your own. Okay. You're not making a duplicate. You're making it your own. But along the way, you're learning some of the skills. So that's a really nice piece that goes along with Google Drawing. Uh, again, first four, all free. A couple more things here, and I know we're heading. I've got five minutes left, so I better hurry up. Comics, you can draw yourself. I mentioned doing a, a, a self-portrait by uh, going over your transparent uh, image. Well, what about doing a comic? And this is actually a shape gram. <laughs> I created this through one of the shape grams. And uh, this is, my wife goes, that looks awful. Don't use that because that doesn't look like you at all. And I'm like, well, kind of does. So anyways, I, I kind of like it. But um, anyways, uh, this is my attempt at a, uh, a, a comicizing, comicizing, making a comic of, of myself, a graphic uh, icon. I don't know. Um, and I've got some different emo emotions going on there as well. It was a lot of fun, but there's a lot of work that went into that as well. So, uh, but then, you know, there's so many other things that you can do when you have your image done. Speaking of comics, here's another nice way to use uh, comics in Google Draw. I know, uh, you know, throughout the province, we have access now to Book Creator, which has got wonderful templates. But in case you're stuck or you don't have uh, access to Book Creator, you can use Google Draw. You can see the one there that I've taken off the web of a teacher who's done it with images and and the uh, callouts and the template on the lower uh, right hand portion. That's one that I created. Here's also kind of going along with a some comic like text that I created in Google Draw and uh, kind of made uh, my message. Uh, a very typical message that I put out there on social media, and I've taken it and I've added a comic element to, a, to it. Yeah, that's a great idea, Gina, and a lot of fun, right? And there's a lot of things that you can do with that and just kind of get them thinking about that, and then they're going to turn it over. I mean, Pixton does that as well, but um, it's kind of fun when you can do it with your own drawing, your own icon that you've created. Um, I've got one more tip here for everybody, and if you're uh, if you use HyperDocs in your classroom in your practice, a lot of times we create HyperDocs and we put the links in, and the kids click on that link, and they go off to another tab. Right? It takes them to Google Draw, or it takes them into YouTube, or it takes them into whatever. Right? But you can actually have um, you can have them work in Google Drawings in your Google Doc. And I just learned this the other day, and I'm like, it's been there in front of my face the whole time. I just learned this, and I went, wow, why didn't I know that? Why didn't I fall off on that years ago? And so you can see I've got the steps here. If you're in Google Draw, the Docs, you insert the drawing. You add it, and then the kids click on that, and it opens up as Google Draw, but you stay within Docs, okay? It's just a little navigation tip. Keep things a little simpler, especially for our younger learners who might get lost, you know, with the, with the various tabs open. So it's nice to know that we can do it all within one place. With that... I know I've presented a lot at you. It's coming at you for like a good hour here. Uh, are there any questions, anything like that I you're unsure about or? You're welcome. You're welcome. Did anybody recognize this screen? Remember this? Yeah, that's right. What I did to that, that screen is I took it and I pixelated it. 
There it is. All right, everybody. Um, thank you for spending some time with me here this afternoon. Uh, love the interactivity that we had within the Google chat. That really helps, as you know, as a presenter, right? Uh, so I appreciate that. Thank you all very much. Uh, have a great remaining, remainder of the day. Wonderful uh, to see you at uh, the Summer Learning Academy. And um, uh, enjoy uh, the summer as well. Have a great fall. And we'll see you around. Thanks, everybody.